As you can see, this form consistently converts 10.2% of one of our clients' traffic into leads. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how we are consistently able to build and churn out really, really high converting pop-up forms for our Shopify partners. Benefits of this are increased conversions at top of funnel and also increased retention and lifetime value of the customers. I'm gonna hop into a screen share now and I'll show you exactly how it's done. So. I'm gonna show you exactly how to build out a high converting form and in terms of like the different specifications that we use for our clients. So first of all, you wanna to go to Clavio obviously and then uh, go to the sign up form section and then you wanna create, hit create form. Now there's two styles of forms that I find generally to be the highest converting. We are only on a demo account, that's why all of this are um, at zero. But anyways, let's get into it. So the first type is the one with the lifestyle imagery and the second type is the one without. So I'm gonna be diving into the uh, one without lifestyle imagery and then I'm gonna go even more in depth on the one with, uh, simply because you can kind of like pick between the two depending on the niche of your store. So first of all, you wanna go to create a signup form and uh, then you wanna pick a template that is relevant for you. So I generally have pop-up selected and also desktop and mobile. In terms of the two types, generally there are the type with a bit of lifestyle imagery like this one where there's a lifestyle imagery plus the enrollment section or the stay in touch form where there's another piece of lifestyle imagery and the sign up section or there's the other type that performs really well where it's the don't miss out win a free item or avoid FOMO where it's very straightforward there's no kind of like fancy images or graphics whatsoever and both forms can perform exceedingly well it just kind of depends on the niche that you are in. So for example, if you're in a uh, fashion niche or something along those lines where it's something that's very visual, like your products are super visual, you'll want to have a lifestyle imagery one where you're demoing the product. However, if you're in a uh, field where it's slightly less visual and more so uh, utilitarian, then you wanna go for something simple as uh, the pop-up form will be lighter in weight, meaning it will have a faster loading speed. Uh, so yeah, it just kind of depends on what niche you're in. So pick out, let's say, uh, let's pick out this one, for example, and uh, name it demo, demo two, no image. And we're gonna choose a list. So it's, make, it's really important that you, you subscribe it to your main list. Uh, that's the list that's going to be triggering the welcome flow and so forth. So you wanna hit create form and you'll be taken to this stage. So I'm actually going to be demoing the, uh, the one with the lifestyle image because there's a lot more nuance in this type of form. So when it comes to uh, creating the form, you first want to modify the behaviors. So the behavior is something that you don't really need to split test too, too much in the beginning. I really want you to focus on the design. The reason this is is because the template I'm giving you here is basically the kind of like winning template that we have after doing literally dozens and dozens and dozens of split, split tests for our clients. So you wanna have a show when visitor is exiting the page. So this is basically just ed exit intent. Essentially how this works is if you're on a, a web page, for example, and they are highlighting or hovering in this area around the closed tab section, that's when the form will pop up to kind of try to pull them back into the site. So you wanna have exit intent on and then show after six seconds after page load and scroll after 50%. Uh, you can kind of like play with these numbers, but to be honest, it's it doesn't make a huge, huge difference. And you wanna make sure this is selected. Uh, don't sh show again after kind of like seven to 14 days of closing. You wanna make sure it's desktop and mobile and you wanna make sure don't show it to existing Clavio profiles is ticked. And also you wanna make sure you exclude certain URLs. So for example, that would uh, more generally be just the cart page, uh, URL containing carts and checkout, as it just doesn't look very nice or professional if uh, a pop-up form manages to show up at those stages of the funnel. So yeah, now the design is the most important aspect when it comes to uh, building your pop-up form simply because this is the element where I'm in least control of uh, in terms of your brand. So uh, what you wanna do is you only want to be collecting the email uh, and like having other elements doesn't matter too, too much in terms of populating your customer contact profile. Unless for example, if you're a store that sells, uh, I don't know, like men's clothing versus women's clothing, then you wanna make sure to have either female or uh, male check on their uh, profile. So when it comes to this, you can feel free to delete this uh, block 
And to be honest, generally speaking, what we do is instead of having a label text, we just put the placeholder text as enter your email here. This kind of just looks slightly cleaner to the average user. And when it comes to modifying the text and the pictures and things like that, we just obviously would, we would adapt uh, whatever color uh, fits the brand and things like that. And you can change that by going to right here in the style section, uh, you could select whatever color. So if you want to have something really, really simple, you could go for something white. Or if you want to go for something like slightly off white, uh, you could do that. And just make sure the colors are kind of aligned with your brand. The important thing here is you really want to have the text and the color to be of high contrast. Because let's say someone were to read your uh, form on their mobile phone, the form is going to be a lot smaller. So if you were to have, say, something like an important piece of small text here, uh, benefit one, two, three of being on the form, the list you really want to make it as easily readable to the audience as possible right and generally speaking when it comes to the button text instead of saying like oh sign up now and make it making it sound very generic we would generally do something along the lines of uh you know um click for your 10 percent discount something along those lines where you're really leading with the offer the whole point of having a high converting pop-up form is actually kind of having an offer because the difference between like having a discount there and having no discount is around a 4x increase in conversions. You can do something very generic like a 10 to 20% discount here. Here. Something along those lines. I mean, obviously you would split test the highest converting offer. So for example, if you see like a 400% uh, jump in conversions when changing from like a 10 to a 15% 15, uh, 15 discount, then it might be worth uh, including that. However, if you only see like a 1.5X jump, then maybe it's not worth it for your brand. There's a lot of nuance when it comes to determining the offer. And because you really need to consider what your goals are. If your goals are to maximize profit, then you know you can sacrifice a bit of conversion with a smaller offer. However, if you really want to be maximizing conversions and growth and revenue growth, then you obviously want to slap a slightly higher number on the discount. So this is the form that I built out real quick for demonstration purposes. As you can see, you know, the background color is like this light green that kind of works with the lifestyle imagery, which I literally just Googled Gymshark lifestyle. And the text really does contrast with the background color. And that's exactly what you are looking for. In terms of the copy, I've gone for something very uh, kind of just generic, like get 10% off everything. Instead, you could do something like, hey, join the family or join the community or become a VIP. Something along those lines that doesn't just scream like, hey, join our list, you know? And then from here, you can kind of like go ahead and split test anything you do that you want. When it comes to the sign up text, you want to make sure it's not something generic like sign up. Now you want to make it offer centric. Uh, for the success message, I haven't actually changed any of this, but you could just say, hey, go check your inbox for your exclusive discount code. And then from here, you can go ahead and hit publish on your site. Now, when it comes to A-B split testing, initially, depending on your offer, what you'll find is that you're going to get a conversion rate of between 3 to 5%, uh, generally speaking. Now, you want to be getting it to around 8% or more. If your offer is insane, like 20% off or something along those lines, then the submission will obviously be much higher than 3 to 5%. I'm just saying the uh, generic kind of like 3, three to 5% is for like a 5 to 10% offer. So let's call this split test a uh, copy uh, variation one. And then you want to put the original copy. So this is version one and version two, new copy. And you want to hit create a test. And then from here, you're going to be able to change the variations. So as you can see, I'm toggled onto original copy for now, but I want to go to new copy. And then here, instead of saying, hey, uh, get 10% off everything, you could say something along the lines of join the, let, let's just use Gymshark community. And then uh, for here, you want to be putting save 10% off your first order 
You see how I'm only doing single variable split tests in the sense that I'm only changing one variable at a time. This is exactly what you want to be doing as you will be isolating the exact variable that's going to be causing the changes. So you want to hit continue to test settings. And then from here, you'll be able to uh, adjust the weight manually or automatically if you want. Personally, I just recommend you stick with automatic for now. And uh, you want to make sure that you want to have this selected. The winner is determined with a high statistical certainty. So for your brand, you know, if it's at a very high volume, you just want Clavio to do this themselves manually, as opposed to you going around and fiddling with this yourself. Generally speaking, within the agency, we keep this toggled on. Uh, however, there are instances where our, our decision will override whatever Clavio decides. Uh, but generally speaking, you know, 80% of the case, this is gonna do just fine for you. In the notes section, I would just describe briefly what the change was. So, uh, made changes to the body copy of the form, uh, less benefit driven. And then from here, you wanna just hit publish, AB split test, and it will appear on your test, uh, on your website. So from here, you're gonna be able to see which uh, form is going to outperform the other. And then from there, you can hit choose a winner, or you could just let the Clavio algorithm do its thing and kind of do it themselves. In terms of the benchmarks you should be aiming for, as I said earlier, 8% or more. Uh, sometimes we can get it above 10%, up to uh, around like, 12 to kind of 13 percent sometimes even 15 16 it just depends on the offer the brand etc uh so yeah now if you found this video useful and you are a e-commerce founder doing above 20k a month in revenue look we'd love to work with you potentially on your email marketing side of things helping you churn out 20 to 30 percent of your monthly recurring revenue through your email channels alone with no additional ad spend if that's you book in a call with me down below i'd love to have a chat